is not on. is not very good. I'm the founder of Top Africa Foundation, a non-governmental organization 
that stands for the total well-being of the underprivileged children, women, and the citizens in the community. Okay, our core focus is on the first five sustainable development goals: no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, and gender equality. And our training today falls under under two categories which is uh, quality education and good health and well-being. This training today is brought to you by Top Love Africa Foundation in collaboration with the University of Houston and the Center for Autism and Developmental Disability. We have uh, Lukia Swami to take us through this project. But then before we start, I'd like you to look at a video which I consider um, inspiring motivating and much more. It's a video of a young boy, a young autistic boy, who was able to scale through the hurdles of life to achieve what he wanted to achieve. He was able to achieve his dream, and of course, with the help of the mother. And that's, I think, where every of one of us comes to play, because if you have indicated interest in being in this training, what it means is, you have a reason, you have a certain autistic person or an, an autistic child, or you want to help train or empower children or people with autism. Okay, now this training is going to start, but before we call, uh, ask Swami to come on board, let's take a look at this video. And then for every one of us, uh, let me just take the house roof. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a HSC person here, but then I'll still do it. We all know the SA door, in case of emergency, use that door, and then if you don't want to go use the convenience, jog your door by my right behind there, you use it, okay? Thank you very much, I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, the connection is not the best, but we will do the best we can. Okay, yeah, let's just take a look at the video and then we'll get you on board. Okay. You let me know when you want me to start. All right, okay. Mind to speak of the television.
Hello, I don't know if they heard the video. I think the audio was quite um, poor, but then I think we can still uh, get on to with the training, and after that, we might still get back to the videos. Okay. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. Yes. Okay, let's go. Right. Okay, so hello everybody. I am delighted to to present today about autism and about applied behavior analysis. I am a board certified behavior analyst. My name is Lukia Tsame. I am here at my office at the University of Houston Clear Lake. We have the Center for Autism and Development and Disabilities which is a graduate program for students and we have also various clinics we have an autism school for children from the age of three up to 16 years old we have a severe behaviorist uh, clinic where individuals of all disabilities with severe behavior can come and we help them improve like decrease problem behavior we have a verbal behavior clinic where we teach individuals from children up to there is no age limit to talk we support students at the university connecting to college is the program we have um, another program collecting the dots connecting the dots that we support families low-income families in the community that cannot afford um, therapy for their children and we also have uh, connections with multiple schools at, um, in our area and further out. And we provide teacher training at the, at the schools. And every summer also invite the teachers and we have long sessions like weekly um, appointment seminars for the teachers, the local teachers to attend. So it's a very active program with lots of components. I have the telehealth clinic. So we figure out that for families who are located further away from where we are, this is a way that we can provide services for with no cost. So we or with very little cost. So we provide services to people who are in other countries or in isolated areas and Telehealth is not ideal, but it's better than nothing, just to provide services to empower people in communities that don't have access to applied behavior analysis. So I'm going to talk today as a professional, but I want to note that also I am a mother of two children who received autism diagnosis. So it's like a dual uh, perspective that I have. I feel, you know, the pain of, of the mother and the difficulties and the struggles of everyday life. And at the same time, I know how to treat problem behavior, how to teach new skills. So I think it's, it's, it's a unique perspective to be in my shoes. So I'm here at the university right now at my office. So I am going to share my screen and you can see my PowerPoint. All right. So hopefully you can see I need my glasses. So let me start. All right, so I would really like to thank Dr. Dorothea Lerman, who is the director of the Center for Autism Development and Disabilities at the University of Houston, PLA. She is allowing, you know, Those I will say later, provision of services directly to families, and we also do research in um, 
countries around the world and, and including Africa. I also want to thank Cynthia uh, without the talk club foundation we wouldn't be able to be here today so she's doing all this for nothing is all volunteers she's not getting paid I'm very grateful for her for her assistance so this is what we are going to cover today we're going to talk a little bit about autism the diagnosis process screening tools I don't know if you can hear me, Cynthia. Yeah, we can hear you. Is the agenda for today. Okay. Okay. So first we're going to talk about autism. Then we're going to talk about applied behavior analysis or ABA. A little last time we're going to talk about the telehealth project and how you can get more out of our projects. So this this picture here is um, a mother that looks from a magnifying glass and she's trying to find answers to her questions um there is a lady janet she is a mother she was my student and also a mother of um of a child with autism and she has found a lot of relief through painting and she creates she makes workshops for other parents and I just love her artwork, and I've, given, I've taken permission for her to use this uh, picture in my slides. And I just want to say that being creative as a caregiver and finding outlets to release your emotions is very important. And Janet has found, um, you know, this painting as, as a way to express herself. All right, so odd one is a neurodevelopmental disability. And there is two big domains. One is difficulty with communicating with social skills, with understanding um, what is happening around the relationships with other people. And the second one is repetitive body movements and behaviors. We call this stereotypy. There is vocal stereotypy, so talking, making sounds, or repeating sounds, or words, or scripting. Um, saying the same thing over and over. And the second one is motor stereotypy. So this is movements, body movements, rocking, going back and forth, or sometimes the fingers. So repetitive behavior and lack with communication, language, development of language and social skills. This is the two domains that characterize autism. Here I put two different pictures of a child that may be typically developing on the left and on a child who may be on the spectrum on the right. So the typical child put a pile of leaves all together and he's on top of the leaves and he says, look, mom, look what I did. And he's talking and he's talking to his mother and the mother is clapping, she's happy. So they are proud of their son who, you know, is engaging in, in, in these actions. So on the right side, a child on the spectrum may be not verbal at this age of three, four years old, um, or maybe have very few words, and there is no a lot of interaction with his mother and father, like limited, very limited social skills, and the play is repetitive, non-functional play. So if you pick up the leaf and falls down, and if you pick up the leaves and we see children with autism, they can do the same thing, which is a very monotone action over and over and over again. And this seems to bring them joy. Now, another example, um, another characteristic for children on the spectrum is we very often see limited eye contact. And, you know, two kids playing, typical kids, like they can talk through their eyes, you can see the expressions, like a big range of expressions in the face. In the psychological assessments, the diagnostic assessments that we use, one of the questions is, what is the range of the facial expressions? Do they have all these emotions you can see? Typically, like classic autism in a child with autism, we see kind of like a blank face, disconnected and 
not so much joy. Maybe internally they feel joy, but it's just not expressed through their faith. Another characteristic is um, that people with a, a difficult it's it's difficult for them to understand how other people are feeling, how they can relate with other people, what is happening. Sometimes they seem like to be in a fog, um, having difficulty. They seem to have difficulty um, to understand pretend, pretend games. So like difficult games, they may, you know, make something to be something else. They may use an object like a pen to pretend that it's a person and it's easy for them. They pick up a rock and they say, this is something 